very important seminar meant to acquaint us with the world fund, fund changes as they occur in line with the dynamic nature of our international organization, Rotary. I most warmly welcome all of you from far and near. Um, looking at the list of attendees, we have quite a number of people who are calling in from out of district and we're quite delighted because that indicates the importance that is accorded to this all um, relevant seminar that has been organized to keep us abreast with development at the foundation office. Before we start, it is my sincere honor and privilege to quickly take a few recognitions um, before the district governor comes in to call the seminar to order. May I, on this note, warmly recognize and welcome the presence of our past district governor, Salihu Ahmed, who had joined us um, while on transit. We, I could see him driving. I pray that um, you drive safely to your destination as you concurrently enjoy the presentations at today's seminar. Thinking that the next things are some of prayer. May I also recognize the presence of past district governor Kola Shodipo, past district governor from district 9110, who has made our time to join us this um, Sunday. We're indeed quite delighted and thank you for joining us, PDG Kola. Good afternoon. I've also seen, I've also seen on the platform past district governor Elvis Chuku who joined us all the way from Jos um, this Sunday afternoon to share and support this seminar in um, appraising the new developments in the World Fund. It is also with great pleasure that I welcome District Governor-elect Ayo Oyedokun, with whom we put this together and um, is currently on the platform to support the seminar in keeping Rotarians, particularly those who are concerned with found the foundation abreast with developments at the World Fund. I must also quickly recognize the presence of Anja Stoke, who is the, um, uh, a staff at the Rotary Foundation, who is here this afternoon to share with us her, um, um, understanding of the dynamic changes that are currently taking place in the World Fund. May I also quickly recognize BJ Kewaramani, who joined us all the way from India. I must thank you sincerely for always being a support to our, event, our events at um, um, Rotary District 9125. He's a friend of our district, and we sincerely appreciate you as you keep supporting our programs. May I also quickly recognize our uh, district grant subcommittee chair, Akin Adetuberu PAG, who is also one of our resource persons for this afternoon's presentation. Um, PAG Akin Adetuberu, you are most welcome, and we sincerely appreciate your presence. May I quickly recognize CP. Adonis Tellard uh, Delhi from District 9102, Benin Republic, who has also made our time this Sunday afternoon to share with us um, the seminar on the world fund changes. You're most welcome, um, Tellard Delhi. Thank May you. I Thank also you, quickly Thank recognize you. Nana, Nana Mensa and RP Nat, both from Accra who have joined us this afternoon to share with us the experiences and changes that are currently ongoing at the World Fund. Um, there are quite a number of people that are joining us as the program unfolds. May I quickly recognize 
our zonal coordinator, Zone 2, Engineer Elvis Obaseki, who joined us um, this Sunday afternoon. We sincerely thank you and we appreciate your presence on the platform. Um, permit thank me, you. distinguished you, materials, our past district governors, district governor elect, um, trailblazer presidents who are on the platform to kick the seminar going. And reason is that today is Sunday, um, typically a rest day for most of us. And it is our sincere desire to make these uh, presentations very brisk. So we would um, enable um, Rotarians go and have some well-deserved rest preparing for tomorrow's um, work day. It is on this note, therefore, that I invite um, the district governor who I can see has not joined us yet. Uh, District Governor, District 9125. She is not here. Permit me, distinguished um, Rotarians, past District Governors, to invite um, past District Governor Elvis Chuku to please call this meeting, this seminar to order on behalf of the District Governor. PDG Elvis Chuku, please. Uh, thank you very much, um, District Trainer. Um, let me lean on the already established protocol to welcome everybody to this seminar, especially our guests from Arai office, Anja Stock. And um, by way of leadership recognition, I appreciate the presence of uh, district governor elect Ayo Oyodekun and all past district governors and rotary leaders in the room. Uh, having said that, the district governor is caught up with some emergencies and she will be joining us immediately. She's done with that. Um, let me, on behalf of the district governor, and every member of District 9125 here in our midst, mm -hmm. welcome everybody to this very mm -hmm. eventful and rewarding mm -hmm. um, seminar which we are going to have. Yeah, this is a lot of new development going on with the Foundation Circle. And it's most important that we keep up with these new developments. Um, it's evolving mm -hmm. and evolving very fast. And only those that are in tandem with this new development that will be able to both assess and take good advantage of um, activities of the foundation, both in terms of grant, DDF, and of course, projects of scale. So on behalf of the district governor, Jumoke Bamiboye, I want to declare this um, seminar meeting open you're all welcome thank you district thank trainer you. thank you so very much past district governor elvis uh for that warm welcome and for um calling the seminar to order mm -hmm. may i therefore invite all participants to take one minute of silent invocation so that um we could pray in our respective faith ask asking God to guide through the seminar. Amen. Thank you so very much. Um, may I um, also on behalf of the district governor invite the district governor elect DGE Ayo Oyedokun to please give us some um, welcome remarks and few comments on behalf of the district governor before the program kicks off in earnest. DGEIO, if you're there, please, we could take a few comments from you on behalf of the district governor um, in respect of the program fixed for the changes in the World Fund as it is evolving so that um, we'll just some. Um, Use that to um, kick the ball rolling. DG Ayo Oyedokun, please take it away. All right, thank you very much, um, the district trainer, and thank you very much for all the participants that are here today. 
Um, I like to follow the queue by saying a big thank you to everybody that's been here by PDG Elvis Chuku has said most of the things that we need to say. Other than also thank and just took, you know, from Rotary International to be joining us here today. And also we have Elizabeth Nganga that is also here today. And I know that all the packages that has been done for enlightenment and education on the World Fund and also we will be having an insight on the program of skills program because we all know that one of the districts in Africa, district um, 9210, you know, is one of the, the first district that would partake in the program of skills in Rotary Foundation in Africa. So Angela will be talking to us about this and we'll be able to key into it, you know, as Rotarians. Also Rotarians from out of our district that are here today. We have Rotarians from Uganda, we have Rotarians from Ghana, we have Rotarians from India, we have Rotarians from Benin Republic, you know, and I know that it will be a rewarding experience for all of us that are here. So thank you very much and let us feel free and, you know, partake and be, you know, attentive to all the programs that are uh, topics that will be treated today. Take care and God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, um, District Yovalo elect. Um, distinguished participants, before I give um, um, the seminar overview, permit me to recognize the presence of past District Governor Joshua Hassan, who is the incoming um, DRFC for District 9125, for whom I must say this seminar has been organized. Um, I believe that the changes that are happening in the World Fund will take off with his assumption of office. And I'm believing also that um, he is um, um, ready and set to um, swing into action, taking into cognizance the changes that are evolving in the World Fund at the foundation. Um, it is evident that the Rotary Foundation has approved some changes to the funding models, which is posited to take off on the 1st of July, 2021. And these change or changes are meant to better support the growth of our global grants and to attempt to balance financial resources available with the program demand. You are aware that the World Fund is that part of the annual fund which is used to support our humanitarian and service projects. These changes have been done with a view to ensuring efficacy, efficiency, and prompt service delivery to our potential yeah. beneficiaries um, with um, the synergy that is most deserved and desired. It is on this note that it became incumbent on us as a district to quickly key into these evolving changes with a view to strategizing and putting our house in order in, um, in order to attract sufficient support from the World Fund of the Rotary Foundation in the incoming Rotary year. The takeoff time, the takeoff deadline is the 1st of July, 2021. It is therefore my sincere pleasure to welcome all of you as we assemble some of the best facilitators from the foundation office, from the district, from the zonal office, and indeed locally to speak with us and bring us up to speed with what to expect. It is the reason we invited um, presidents elect in common district chairs for the foundation, for the annual fund, for the world fund, for the endowment. We have brought together all the stakeholders, critical stakeholders with a view to ensuring that at the end of this presentation, we will be on the same page and set to tap into our world fund in enhancing our service delivery to our communities and the world at large. 
It is at this point, therefore, that I, with the greatest pleasure, would invite Andrew Stoke from the from the foundation office to um, hit the ground running by giving us a presentation on the Rotary Foundation program of scale grants. If our own Angela Stove is on standby, may I invite her to take over the stage and take it away from here. Angela Stove, please. Thank you so much, uh, Theodore. Uh, and everyone, it's a pleasure uh, to be here today. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's fantastic to see uh, the face to many of the names I already know. Um, as mentioned, I'm here to talk about the programs of scale, but first I wanted to say uh, briefly a bit about some something about me. As you know, my name is Anya and I work as an advisor for the Rotary Foundation at um, the Europe Africa office in Zurich, Switzerland. I've been with the Rotary now for almost three years um, and so lucky to be working for the Rotary Foundation. I know that Elizabeth Nanga uh, got an invitation to join us today as well, but um, unfortunately she could not, but she has uh, recorded a video that we will be showing um, for her. So if you do have any questions, I'm happy to answer them uh, or you can reach out to her um, at any point as well. So big or small questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. Okay, so I will start sharing my screen now. I hope that you can all see my screen. Just one question. Can you see the one with the notes or the presentation? Both of them. Both of them. OK. I'm sorry. I don't know how to change that. Um, just one second. There we go. Maybe that's better. Um, yes, so as mentioned, I'm here to talk about the programs of scale. Um, uh, first, um, the vision for the pro uh, from the program of scale is that it will provide Rotary members with a mechanism for large scale, high impact project that will, will attract uh, partner organizations and provide learning to inform the types of programs that can have the greatest long-term impact. So the program of scales is the foundation's newest grant type and is created to fund scalable Rotarian led programs within our areas of focus. This is to increase our impact, measure our achievements and also understand how we uh, achieved impact and share that learning and achievement through the Rotary world. Um, the programs that are likely to uh, receive um, the programs of scale funding are programs that are have a scale. So why is your program ready to scale? What have you learned through past implementation? And how will you apply that to scaling? How will you use this program to inform future opportunities to scale? Sustainability, what is your sustainability plan for scaling? How will you ensure the program's continuity after the grant uh, funding is spent? Um, partnership, what is the role of Rotary members in the program? What are the roles and responsibilities of the other partners and stakeholders? And how does each partner contribute to the success and support of the intended long-term impact of the program? Implementation, uh, do the program's budget, timeline, and scope of work align with the three to five year implementation period for, for the grants? And what milestones must be achieved for success? And uh, lastly, impact. What is the vision of success and how will we measure it? What are the key assumptions and risk and how are they addressed in the program design? These are some of the things you need to think about uh, when sending in, uh, before sending in an application to the Rotary Foundation. So this is a bit about the program history. So the trustees uh, tasked the general secretary to investigate and develop a new grant type that would fund scalable projects in the areas of focus. This was in April, 2016. 
um, the programs of scale was approved as a new grant model awarding no less than two million dollars annually starting with the first project award uh, this year this rotary year uh, and then um, this year, the Partners for Malaria Free Zambia was approved as the first program of scale. So what is uh, programs of scale? It's a competitive grant process to award $2 million to programs that are long term, so three to five years. Um, have evidence-based interventions, so already demonstrative success in, the affecting, uh, in affecting change. They are locally relevant to the needs, priorities, and institutional structures of the setting and intended beneficiaries. They are ready to grow by having the right stakeholders and system engaged to bring the intended benefits to new settings, such as different community or group of people. And um, they have implemented according to a strong theory of change and has integrated monitoring, evaluation, and collab collaborative learning and are guided by members in partnership with others, leveraging the unique strengths of Rotary. So um, Rotarians should be heavily involved. It should mobilize communities and the Rotarians should use their voices to advocate for change and volunteer. Um, unlike uh, global grants, there's no international sponsor required, but definitely international exchange is heavily encouraged. Yeah. Also uh, local Rotarian ownership and um, this program could also be within any area of the fo areas of focus. Uh, also, our new environmental. Um, so the first competition went from January to December 2020. It was a two-step competition. In step one, we called for proposals in January 2020. And these proposals were due in March 2020. And then in May, the top proposals were invited to submit their application. In step two, uh, it was the full applications and application um, um, deadline was in September. And then in December, um, the applicants received the final notification of the award. So this process, um, actually from phase one to phase two, uh, we went from about 70 projects down to six and the um, the people involved um, um, review were Rotary members, uh, cadre members, staff members and also subject matter experts. Um, more than 25 members and staff contributed to the review and selection process for the first programs of scale award. These are the people that has been of involved um, in this process. You can see in the proposal review, it was seven people. Uh, and for the application review and virtual site visit, it was quite a lot of more people. Um, and there uh, they speak, spoke with the different um, partners uh, and people involved. And then in the selection committee, it was three people. Here you can see the uh, complete proposals that we re uh, received um, within the different areas of focus. So within basic educational literacy, we had four uh, proposals, community and economic development, 14, uh, disease prevention and treatment, 23. So that was the biggest um, area of focus or proposals uh, within one area of focus. And then mothers and children, saving mothers and children, we had seven. Um, promoting peace, five. And then within water, sanitation, and hygiene, we had eight proposals. And then there was one uh, where two areas of focus were combined. So in total, there were 62 proposals, where 33 of them were unfortunately not eligible, but 29 were. And this is the final applicant group. Um, as mentioned before, six projects. Um, there was one from India where um, the project was about improve, improving learning for six to 12 year old students. Um, the winning, winning program was from Zambia, eliminating malaria. From Nigeria, reducing maternal mortality and infant mortality. Tanzania, increasing access to finance for farmers and entrepreneurs. 
and then from Honduras, improving access to water and sanitation and hygiene in schools and communities. So basically what was looked at was scalability, sustainability, learning, stewardship and public image, as well as thought about diversity, equity and inclusion, and also the environmental impact of the programs and the implementation in the midst of a global pandemic. So I just want to say that the same project can be submitted twice, but take into consideration the feedback that has been received. Uh, the program review criteria looked like this. It was about um, the um, committees were looking at readiness of scale. So the scalability, likelihood of sustainability and the opportunities for future scale. It was about the readiness to learn together. So the monitoring and evaluation plan as well as uh, learning partnerships. And then how it represents Rotary, so good stewardship and people of action. This is some um, comments that has been said about the programs of scale so far. Um, Rotarians are essential to the change process. This fills the gap for Rotarians who know what works and want to grow successful programs. Rotary is grassroots to grass stops. This is a new model to support effective multi-stakeholder partnerships. We love it. Uh, this is wonderful. Everyone should know about programs of scale and this is the future of Ro Rotary. Uh, these are the final selection results. Um, the OED was, as mentioned, the partners for Malaria Free Zambia. And the final is uh, the project from India, Every Child Learning Well at 1500 primary schools and Tanzania Safe to Grow 2.0. And then the honorable mentions were sustainable improvement of reproductive maternal and child health in Nigeria and urban and rural water systems and wash in schools infrastructure and improvements from Honduras. So Rotarians built multi-stakeholder partnerships around programs that have a clear evidence that they do work to create the change that Rotarians wants to see in their communities and the world. They understood the community need and also built strong key performance metrics around their programs so they know at each stage of implementation that their programs work as, and that the benefits can be sustained. And the key factors were, was the system approach that the program was in line with the local, regional and national government efforts and sustainability was integrated into program design and implementation. <clears throat> there was a strong monitoring, evaluation and learning system. So the MEL framework or the monitoring, evaluation and learning uh, framework would inform learning during implementation as well as contribute to learning for Rotarians and other key program stakeholders. In some cases, the learning could also contribute to larger policy and practitioner discussions. Uh, the Rotarian roles, uh, the Rotarians could participate as volunteers and program level guides, but they could also use their convincing, convening advocacy and policy influence power to support longer term um, change and also co-funding. While co-funding was not a requirement in the first round, the final set of programs all presented strong co-funding and less important than the dollar amount, this really demonstrated uh, their belief in the power of multi-stakeholder partnerships with Rotary. These are the milestones. So in February, 2021, uh, the programs of scales, uh, scale OD and finalists were announced. Now, between March and May 2021, uh, the co-funding was 100% secure and the full program communications uh, is launching. And we also have Rotary learning sessions going on or coming up, which will be on my next slide. And now in June 2021, we will launch the second programs of scale competition. So stay tuned, bring your best everything, not just the idea. And these are some great resources that I would highly recommend you to take a look at. Um, on our Rotary web page, you can find information about the program of scales. If you do have any, have any questions, you can also reach out to the email um, you can see there. That's the program of scale team or also to myself. And if I cannot answer your question, I'll be more than happy to guide you in the right direct um, direction or in the right direction. Um, there's also an FAQ 
on our website. And next week, actually tomorrow, we will start um, uh, the um, webinar series. So um, the first one will be with Larry Cooley, Scaling Impact for Transformative Change. And then coming up the 18th with Drew Coleros, What is Theory of Change? And then the 20th, how to use uh, theory of change to strengthen program design and delivery. Uh, the information about these uh, webinars were sent out the 3rd of May, and there's two different timings uh, on each day where you can log in and see this. So, yeah, do you have any questions? If not, I would like to say thank you very much for listening. Um, if you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. I'm here for all of you. So yeah, thank you again. Um, thank you so very much. Um, and just talk for this very lovely and incisive presentation. Um, the program of scale brings in yet a new dimension in the funding opportunities at the foundation. And I think it is important for us as some um, stakeholders and um, potential humanitarian service delivery agents to begin to synthesize this presentation by um, Anja. So we will begin to figure out the best ways to tap into these opportunities. Um, we cannot say thank you enough. What we will do is to warehouse the questions that will come <coughs> in respect of your presentation and also plead with the participants to tweak the program a bit and invite you, Anja, to please flash in the presentation by Elizabeth um, Kanga so that we can take the two presentations together and perhaps also um, put the questions together to you since you will be answering both questions and the stook. I don't know if that's fine by you, Anja. That is fine, no problem. Okay, so please, could you just from your own end, um, put on the video from Elizabeth Nganga. Sure, so one second. Together. Thank you so very much and we appreciate you. Good afternoon, District 9125. Good afternoon, DG Jumoke. I recognize any re regional leader that is present. Past district governors, district trainer, district secretary, club presidents, and anyone else who has joined uh, this TRF seminar, good afternoon. It is indeed my greatest honor and pleasure to be part of this seminar and to be able to share and uh, take us through the World Fund changes. Before I begin, allow me to congratulate DG Jumoke, who by last week only had one club in the entire district and they are uh, listed as an annual fund non-giving club. Within the region, we do have districts that have a couple or multiple clubs that are listed as uh, annual finance giving clubs. But I recognize District 9125, which so far only has one club that has been listed as a non giving club. And I do know that the effort, uh, there is a lot of effort going into making sure then that a great achievement such as having uh, being declared as a district that had none giving that did not have any clubs listed as none giving clubs uh, is a great achievement. So congratulations. I know it has taken a lot of effort. It has taken a lot of zest and a lot of energy. And thank you for your leadership in doing that. So thank you so much. 
Uh, this afternoon, my, my role is to discuss about the World Fund changes. And uh, as we get into the PowerPoint, allow me to apologize initially and just say that there's a little more to words than perhaps you would have liked to see in the presentation. But this is as I look forward or as I hope and as I was looking for ways in which uh, we can understand the World Fund changes what has necessitated those changes and how then they have come to benefit us. So if you find it a little bit too wordy, um, sincere apologies, every effort has been made to make sure that then uh, it, we, we are able to understand um, the topic of the day. I'll be sharing my screen so that then we can be able to move uh, together. So as fund development specialist, I support Zone 22, which is uh, Africa, on matters pertaining to the Rotary Foundation, and therefore I am happy to be here. Allow me to go back to the introduction or to the basics so that then we understand where we have come from for us to get this fund. We know that the mission of the Rotary Foundation is to help Rotarians like yourselves and myself as a Rotarian to advance world understanding, goodwill, peace by improving health, providing quality education, improving uh, the environment and alleviating poverty. Before I joined the Rotary Foundation as staff, uh, I had interacted with Rotarians, which, which kind of made me desire to become a Rotarian and I became a Rotarian before I was staff. Uh, because in my field of work, uh, working as a social worker and working in many informal settlements within Kenya and beyond, then I would interact with Rotary clubs coming to do project and uh, community projects within the regions that I was in. And this made me desire then to be a Rotarian. So indeed, the Rotary Foundation does help Rotarians achieve uh, the mission of implementing projects and doing good in the world. But how... How is this mission supported? Uh, I would say that the foundation has established various uh, grant programs, which include district and global grants, polio plus disaster response grants, Rotary Peace Centers, and programs of skills. All these are avenues that clubs and districts have, have been able to utilize for them to be able to implement the projects within their communities, both locally and globally. So these programs are only possible thanks to the generosity of donors, such as yourselves, who have continued to support our programs directly and through various funds of the Rotary Foundation. So the World Fund, which is the topic of this discussion or this presentation, should be seen as just one component of the larger funding mechanisms of these programs. So what is the annual fund and the annual fund share? Uh, the Rotary Foundation World Fund is best known for being part of the share system. We know that uh, we share the annual fund uh, and that money gets divided into World Fund and into district designated fund. So what happens is that once donations from donors come into a pool, or we know that we select when we are making a contribution, we do select the designation or the, that we want the money to go. And uh, more often than not, because that is what allows us to do projects, then there's the annual fund, which is what um, a lot of Rotarians and a lot of donors give to, especially in this part of the region. So once money is collected or what we call the annual fund donations, then that money is invested for one year two years, three years, and on the fourth year, then that money is withdrawn. Now that money, remember, has, has increased because then there's what we invested and then there's what the proceeds from the amount that we invested. So that money, assuming we had one X go be invested for three years, then by year four, then we have two X. So what does this money do? Once we withdraw the money, 50% of it goes as district designated fund. So 50% of the money that we have withdrawn comes back to your district for you to implement the way your district desires. Of course, there are guidelines, but that money does come back to your district. Then where does the other 50% go? The other 50% is what we are calling World Fund, which is our topic for discussion. So. What happens to the 50% that you get as DDF or District 9125 has as DDF? That money, you can use it for district grants, 
that is to implement the projects or to help bridge the gaps that are uh, that you're experiencing locally to implement uh, district grants that money can be used to fund global grants and that money can also be used for other programs so what happens to the world fund and what does the world fund support the world fund contributes to one global grants through the world fund much uh, the ddf that you give that i talked initially that goes to the global grant then there's a match for it where does that match come from that match comes from the world fund and until recently the 50 percent match on cash donations but we'll see the change that has come two world fund also polio plus from your ddf uh, you are encouraged to donate your DDF. And if one way that you can donate your DDF is to polio, then there's a match that comes from the World Fund. So if you donate X amount to polio from your DDF, then the World Fund match will get a, a portion of its money and match your DDF so that then there's more money going into the Polio Plus uh, Fund. Peace Center programs. So administrative costs that are not covered by other funding sources other grants program operations we will uh, discuss this because this also there's a change that has come to this so operational expenses for trf grants and programs uh, yet this excludes polio plus fund development and general administration what we would generally call the operating cost so five percent of the annual fund contributions are automatically earmarked for fund development and general uh, administration so because again then um to be able to run the rotary foundation to be able to run grants or whatever it is then there's an administrative cost that comes to it so five percent until we talk about the change five percent of that money has been coming from the world fund programs of scale uh i would really encourage the district to go into to begin looking and thinking about programs of skills because these are really high impact scalable projects that can be funded up to two million a year and zambia district 9210 who, whose current dg is dg lucy has been able to enjoy uh, and is implementing a program of scale so special trustee initiatives also comes from the world fund uh, although this is on an exceptional basis, we are aware that during uh, we were districts were supported to respond to COVID-19, and this came from the World Fund at the trustees' discretion. So, what are the World Fund changes now that we know the basics? World Fund change number one is that the district designated fund. If we go back to the previous slides, we remember that once the annual fund is implement is 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 collected, implemented for uh, invested for year one, year two, year three, and withdrawn on year four, fifty percent goes to the DDF and fifty percent comes to World Fund. So that DDF, if we transfer or if we fund money from the DDF to go to Polio Plus, then this will be matched at fifty percent and that 50%, so that then we have more going to polio, that 50% comes from the world, um, that match will come from the world fund. So two years ago, the match on DDF transfers to polio plus increased from 50% to 100%, and this was in the hope of attracting more support to polio plants. However, uh, there was a, a, a decrease, so the match has been restored to 50% effective on July 2021. What does this change mean to us? Uh, instead of funding, instead of giving a match from DDF to polio at 100%, when we reduce it to 50%, what does this mean to us? This decision may provide up to an additional 5 million US dollars to the World Fund. And so this means if we have more money in the World Fund, then this means that more global grants can be funded. Please remember that ending polio remains the top priority of Rotary. And so we are still committed to carrying this, and that is why we are still encouraging, especially instead of having the DDF rolled over, that we continue to fund polio uh, so that then we, we, uh, we, 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 can, we can end polio in the world. World Fund change number two is that the World Fund March on DDF will be reduced from 100% to 
were being used for global grant. The first one was the match is reduced from 100% to 50% when the DDF allocation goes to Polio Plus. The second change is that the World Fund match of DDF will be reduced from 100% to 80% when being used for global grants. We've already heard of the growth of global grants over recent years. Since they were introduced in 2013, Rotary's global grants have grown tremendously. And we should necessarily, we should actually be proud of that fact because uh, demand for global grants is growing much faster. However, it is not growing, um, contributions to that and to the fund is not growing, doesn't have a steady increase like the demand for that amount of money. So that means that we have so many global grants and this again, um, this does demonstrate our, our urge and why we came into Rotary uh, because of the service that is above self. So Rotarians have gone out and Rotarians want to do high impact uh, um, projects and to implement in, uh, projects within their communities, both at home and, and, and internationally. And, but then the demand for global grants and the demand to be funded to do this project is not commensurate to the money that is coming in to fund this project. And so this change, this action will further leverage the use of the World Fund and the available funding will be spread over more grants. In the current Rotary year, as long as funds remain available, DDF transfers will continue to be matched at 100% for all grants submitted by 31st May and approved by the end of the Rotary year. So this means that by reducing the match from 80% to 100%, then we are able to accommodate more global grants than initially we would have. Change number three is that the ability to roll over unused DDF will be limited for five years. At the end of each Rotary year, district designated funds that have been held for more than five years will be applied at the district discretion to, the, to either polio plus, area focus and doubt funds, general endowment, disaster response or the world fund so district designated funds instead of keeping uh having the money increasingly get getting rolled over districts are encouraged to consider uh donating that money so that then it can go uh to either to the area uh, the, to the area of discretion that the district desires it to go and when you look at it why do donors give to the rotary foundation it is because they believe that the money is going into good use into implementing projects. But then if we are continuing to keep that money year in, year out, then that does not demonstrate or does not show the urge to implement projects. That money should come in and be spent to make a difference or to do good. So if you roll over money for more than, you cannot roll over money for more than five years. It will have to be, to go to uh, a project that, that uh, a project or an area of focus that the district desires. What does this decision do? This decision was made by the trustees as donors to the annual fund expect that their contributions will be used reasonably and promptly for doing good in the world. So as of 1 July 2021, we will begin to age the amounts that are going to DDF rollover. So for example, if by the end of 30th June 2021, a district has 50,000 from the current year allocation that they did not spend, it will go to DDF rollover. And if at the end of the next rotary year, which is June 2022, it is still unspent, then that would be considered as one year old. And so by 2026, 1 July 2026, is when we shall begin um, uh, the first road DDF rollover redirection will happen. So let us make sure that the donations so generously given and the, and the donors are yourselves and myself. So let us make sure that the donations are given are put to good use as soon as possible. Change number four is that 5% of the current year's annual fund share contributions will equally be taken from the World Fund and DDF to help fund uh, operating costs, operational costs. Currently, 
Annual fund share contributions are split equally between the World Fund and DDF, with 5% of the total share contributions being deducted only from the World Fund to help pay for operating costs. So what that means is that the 5% that is used as operating cost, the entire amount as at now comes from the World Fund. So moving forward from 1 July, then how do we reduce to be able to increase? Remember, the goal is to be able to avail as much World Fund money to districts and to clubs to implement, world, uh, to implement their projects. So instead of getting a whole 5% from the World Fund, then now that money will be taken from DDF and from World Fund. So 2.5% will be taken from DDF and 2.5% will be taken from World Fund. So, so this will take on, will, will reduce the pressure that is uh, on the World Fund uh, currently going to operating costs. This change is expected to increase the amount of available, uh, the amount available for grants by approximately $3 million to reduce the pressure on the World Fund because half of the amount, as I have said, will be covered, uh, or half of the amount from the World Fund that covered operating expenses will now be available for funding local grants. So this means that then it now increases the amount that is available to us uh, on World Fund to be able to implement projects. So that is an example, and, and as you can see, that currently 5% of the operating, I mean, if you have $100 and, uh, $45, $50 goes to World Fund and $50 goes to District Designated Fund, we are getting 50% from the World Fund and therefore leaving World Fund with $45. Or we are getting $5 from operating expenses and leaving World Fund with $45. Uh, but then from 1 July, with a donation of $100, for example, and we need $5 for operating expenses, we will get 2.5 from the World Fund, leaving the World Fund with 45, uh, 47.5 dollars and district designated funds with 47.5 dollars so i really hope i have been able to demystify and to talk about the changes because these are four changes and how best we can then utilize or maximize um that and i hope that we are able to see that at the end of the day reducing what pressure on the world fund only means that there's more money available for us uh, to implement in terms of global grants uh, and projects that we desire to do and allow me to um address one question that has come more frequently uh, and the question has been instead of the ddf let me go back to Yes, ability to roll over and use DDF uh, being limited to five years. And I have had a question where district governors have asked, why instead, why, why can we not use the DDF to implement district grants as opposed to global grants? Because uh, they would rather than then, instead of rolling over that amount, why don't they be allowed to uh, use that money for district grants? And we know that the main difference between the district grants and the global grants is that district grants do fund uh, projects that are local and projects that are not necessarily in sync or not necessarily responding to the area of focus. And this is all right because then this is the discretion of the districts to meet the immediate local need that is there and to bridge the immediate local gap that exists and therefore they have the DPF to use that. However, we know that global grants give us an, a unique and golden opportunity. One, for us to have, to have high impact, to implement high impact projects. Two, for us to have, uh, to ensure that the projects or the investment made on that project is sustainable, to have and involve the community so that then uh, the, the, the investment of the project then is responding to a need that the community actually has because then it calls for a lot of community engagement and community assessment. Four, global grants also do allow us to partner and interact with other organizations uh, or other clubs and districts that are not because we must partner have an international partner. So this is a unique opportunity for cross-border learning and for cross-border uh, interaction. And Lastly, is that the global grants, because they must be in line with Rotary's area of focus, 
our Rotary's brand. The global grant gives us an opportunity to have the Rotary face and to have the Rotary brand so that when people go into a community that has been sustained, that is sustainable and that has been there for long and a lot of investment has been made into it, then that represents uh, what Rotary actually stands for. So global grants, so DDF cannot be, we can only allow a small portion of the DDF to go to district grants, but the rest of it must go to global grants because of the unique opportunities that it presents to the clubs and to the districts. So I really hope that uh, I have been able to deliver the message and I do hope that we've been able to see how these changes affect us and it is my sincere prayer that we are going then to optimally use um, the funds that are made available and uh, we are going to continue giving to the annual fund and in the same breath we are going to continue requesting for that money and implementing projects both locally and internationally so that then we can continue to do the service that is above self. Thank you very much. My email is, under is, 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 is on the slide. Thank you very much and thank you to the district trainer, district secretary and to the DG for giving me this golden opportunity. Thank you very much and have a great week ahead. Thank you. Um, thank you so very much, um, Elizabeth Nganga via the video and thank you, Anja, for helping us flash that up. Um, distinguished participants, you would have heard the details of the new evolving world fund of the foundation and the adjustments that have been made to strengthen the fund for better performance and service delivery. We are getting abreast with it now and it is to enable us to prepare for the incoming Rotary year, even as our applications begin to reach out to the foundation okay. office. We're so privileged that we had um, in attendance, um, Anja Stoke and Elizabeth Nganga talking to us directly from the foundation office and giving us the very rare opportunity to mm -hmm. raise questions, not just on the presentations, but on the totality of, of, the, of the new developments that are occurring in the World Fund. May I therefore invite the District Grant Subcommittee Chair, PAG Akin Adetuberu to take us through the question and answer session in respect of the two presentations. DGSC Akin Adetuberu, please. Thank you very much, my district trainer. And uh, thanks. I want to thank the DGA and other district leaders for their project. And particularly the Arata and the Stoke and the, the other person. Uh, I want to allow participants to please ask their questions as they want. Hello. Hello. I'm so sorry. Your line, there's a lot of static on your line. We can barely hear you. I don't know if you want okay. to make adjustment in terms of wow. your the network. You're cracking. There's a lot of static on the line. Okay. On the line. Okay. It is not better. Is it better? I think I, it's not better. I think I need to step in and um, give you of this role because of time. So um, distinguished Rotarians and participants, this is an opportunity for us to quickly send our questions okay. to Stoke, who is here to respond to the queries you might raise in respect of the presentations by herself and that of Elizabeth Nganga. So um, may I quickly take two questions to be found on the platform. The first one is a question whether the application process 
of funding for the program of scale is similar to what we knew about the global grants. This question was sent in by our respected past district governor, Saliu Ahmed. I don't know if Andre took note of that question. Very well, that's the first question. The second question I have here is, what is the difference between the global grant project and the scale of program projects? This question came from Damendra Kelari from the Rotary Club of Midtown District 3170. Um, I think you can, if you can respond to these two questions, we'll harvest more questions and also take contributions and comments from the participants before we go to the second plenary. So Anja, please take it away. Yes, thank you very much for your questions. Um, so first of all, the difference between a global grant and the program of scales is um, the impact or the people that it's impacting. So the uh, program of scale is a very large uh, program, up to $2 million or $2 million yearly. And global grants are um, smaller programs um, that also requires an international sponsor. So those are like the two main uh, differences. Uh, the second question was regarding the application process for the program of scales. I would highly recommend you to go to uh, Roadways web page and uh, to and just put in program of scales because there you will also find more information about the application process itself. So it's um, definitely worth checking out. And then also, like I mentioned, the webinars uh, when you are developing the program of scales applications, uh, if you do decide to submit one, um, I would highly recommend you to check out the webinars as well to, to read a bit more about um, wh what it takes to uh, take on such a large and high impact uh, project. I hope that answered your question. If not, please let me know and I'm happy to elaborate further. Okay, thank you so very much, Anja. Um, there is yet another question on the platform asking whether Rotaractors are allowed to participate in global grant projects. Whether Rotaractors are allowed to apply for and participate in global grant projects. This question came from um, Rotarian um aborishadi aborishadi okay yeah. um if you can email me that question i'll be happy to to elaborate further in an email there's been quite a lot of changes for road directors um taking place from first of july so i would prefer to to answer that question over email if possible all right. But road directors are uh, encouraged to um, participate in global grants. You know, like at the moment, they've not been able to apply for them themselves, but uh, to be involved in um, the application development and the fundraising part, um, um, and also the social like marketing of the project and so on. So please do email me. I'll send my email in, in the full chat. And then for any questions you might have, please uh, feel free to reach out. All right, thank you so very much, Anja. Um, we have quite a number of our past district governors and Rotary leaders on the platform. And I will, before we move to the next um, plenary, I would want to invite any of our past district governors. Joshua Hassan is on the platform. If you would want to make a comment or ask questions of Anja regarding the program of scale um, and the presentation by Elizabeth Nganga. Is PDG Joshua Hassan in the house? I'm in the house. Uh... Thank you very much. I'm following the trend very well, and I'm listening carefully and learning. And thank God that uh, Anja and Elizabeth are on call 24-7, so I have no problem with that. But it's, apart from the percentages of that, uh, the, it's the same old rope and regulations uh, to follow. But above all is uh, what Elizabeth says. We are the people giving the money we should contribute and utilize the money effectively and doing good in the world. 
And uh, this is not the time, but I'd like to thank Anja so much for all the effort they are putting with all our bordering them and keeping up the space. Thank you very much and well done district trainer. Thank you so very much, our respected past district governor, Joshua Hassan. Um, past district governor, Salu Ahmed is also on the platform. I don't know if you want to make a comment, PDG Salu Ahmed to enrich the presentation so that we can take it up from there. PDG Salu Ahmed, please. Is PDG Salu Ahmed in the house? No. Okay, if he is not on, may I um, kindly invite um, past district governor Elvis Chuku to also give his bite to the presentation to see how he can encourage those of us here uh, to make the best of these two very enriching presentations. PDG Elvis Chuku, please. Yeah, thank you very much, District Trainer. I think um, those were full loaded uh, presentations. Uh, but I just want to throw probably a question to Anja. Anja, I'm not trying to put you up, uh, but for obvious reasons, do you have an idea one of the fundamentals that made those um, uh, projects, I mean, um, uh, projects of scale not to pass through? It will be important if you let us have a peep into why some of them uh, didn't scale through. I don't know whether you were part of um, the review committee at any stage, but if you're not, I'm probably sure that um, you were able to see some of the review results. This is just, I mean, uh, for consumption of participants who may be interested in probably putting up application from June uh, so that they don't get to uh, repeat or make a few mistakes that disqualified uh, those projects? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was not a part of uh, the review team. Um, for that, I would highly recommend you to reach out to the email um, I provided earlier for the program of scale. Um, if the, like for all of the programs that were, um, or the final applicants, uh, they did receive feedback on their application. Um, so, yeah, do reach out to the Program of Skills uh, team and they'll be happy to provide you with further uh, feedback and also what you can do to improve um, any project, uh, project that you might have already submitted. Um, I hope that answered your question. And then I would like to go back to the Rotaract question if that's, if you may allow me, Theodore. Please, by all yeah. means. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen here. Okay, can you see my screen at the moment? Yes. Yes. Um, so beginning of July 2022, Rotary Act clubs can be the primary sponsors of global grants and to be eligible to host uh, or be international sponsor of global grants, uh, the Rotary Act club has to have partnered previously with the Rotary, Act cl Rotary club or district on a global grant and also be qualified um, according to the district's rules. Uh, in order to participate in global grants. And until then, um, how districts and Rotaract clubs can prepare to get actors involved in global grants is to appoint Rotaractors to a subcommittee role, uh, to involve Rotaractors in grant funded project now as partners, to develop a system uh, to keep track of which Rotaract clubs have participated in a global grant uh, funded project, and ask Rotor actors to help organize a fundraiser, invite them to uh, training related uh, to the foundation, and also consider whether changes are needed in how the district distributes DDF for global grants to help facilitate Rotor Act involvement. Um, furthermore, um, they can also learn about global grants by completing the grant management seminar in Rotary's Learning Center help conduct uh, the community assessments in preparation for a district or global grant funded project, 
grants and also assist with hands-on implementation of a district or global grants. Um, assist with public relations and advocacy efforts related to a global grant and also lend technical, cultural um, and academic expertise to the development of a global grant project. I hope that answered the question a bit deeper. Uh, this was quite incisive and, <laughs> and enlightening because um, we have always had as to the um, point, entry point at which we could have our retractors engaged in global grant projects. And I think this explains it very well. It is maybe for retractors to partner with Rotarians in the meantime, so they can gain the mileage and experience to prepare them for what is coming in 2022. So thank you so very much. Uh, we sincerely appreciate that. Um, I yeah, this three channel, just a comment and one oh, last question. Please, to Andrew. Um, go ahead, PDG Elvis. Okay, Anja, I just wanted to find out uh, looking at the statistics that is available, I think out of uh, 63 submitted um, um, projects of scale. Only one awardee was selected, probably um, the project from Zambia. Now, moving forward, is it that it's going to be one project per rotary year, or do we take it that this is just an uh, probably um, offset of this program? Uh, because um, if you have to do one project of scale per year globally, well, few of us feel that that is quite um, small. Do we see a progression in the number of recipients or awardees uh, moving forward? Uh, that's a great question. Um, this is the first year that we're doing this program of scale and the intent is to do one a year. Um, so that would be my, my answer for now. Let's see what the future brings, um, but it is um, one um, awardee per year for this program of scale of $2 million. Okay, that's for now. Thank you. Hello. Thank you very much. All right. I hope so, that answered the question. All right, so thank you so very much. Um, distinguished Rotarians, uh, we are just trying to drill the um, ramifications of the first two presentations that dealt with the program of scale and the changes to the World Fund. And um, don't forget that we have yet another set of um, presentations in the second plenary to deal with. Uh, we have some of the best hands in the zone on standby to talk to you about those very important topics. I am prepared to take one or two more questions on the program of scale and the change in the world fund from participants. If you have um, any questions before we move to the next session. So if you wanna ask any question, please just um, indicate by showing your hands on the platform not on the video, show your hands on the platform and I'll give you the opportunity to do so before we move into the second session. So question time, please. Well, so far there is no question, there are no questions coming in. And I assume that's a signal for us to move into the second session quickly. We can still take questions from this presentation in the second Q and A. Um, so if we're not taking you now, you could keep your questions in abeyance for consideration um, after the next two presentations. So um, permit me distinguished um, Rotarians, my past district governors, um, Rotary leaders in the house to um, kick start the second plenary. And the second plenary is going to be 
um, commenced by the topic opportunities on the DDF changes. We're privileged to have in the house the Regional Rotary Foundation coordinator, our past district governor, Dende Shoga, Shoga, who all the way from Lagos has um, volunteered to spend his Sunday afternoon with us and to share his experiences on the opportunities available in the DDF changes with our district this afternoon. It is therefore my singular honor and privilege to welcome um, PDG Dende Shoga, who is now going to take it away from this point and share with us the opportunities available on the DDF. PDG, please take it over. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. Good afternoon. Nice to be among you today to spend a few minutes talking about how the changes in the World Fund and also application of uh, DDF will still provide opportunities for us to serve and make a difference in our communities in the coming year and the years to come. Um, I hope I'm permitted to share my screen so that we can proceed. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you. Um, the, I thank the previous speakers, Elizabeth and Nanja, and also fellow Rotarians for your questions and thank them for their presentation, which in a way has made my job Please, IRC, you have to unmute yourself again, then you can share your screen. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. So, opportunities in spite of the, in the face of the changes to DDF. And uh, first, a little introduction of what the foundation intends. That is the mission of the Road Foundation, which is to help us to advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace by improving health, providing quality education, improving the environment, and alleviating poverty. And uh, in order to support this mission, the foundation has established various grant programs which include district grants, global grants, Polio Plus, Disaster Response Grants, Rotary Peace Centers, and the program of skills we were just talking about. Now, in the past, as you were told by Elizabeth, our annual funds are shared 50, 50 between the World Fund and the district designated fund. But there have been some changes now although essentially the way the funds are applied have not changed too much, but there have been recent changes to the percentages of the funds as shared between us as districts and the world fund, which is the general pool of funds available to Rotarians all over the world to execute our projects. Under the old system, like I told you, when funds are admitted into the annual funds by good people like you, three years later, after the new funds have been invested, half of it comes back to us as TDF and half goes to the World Fund. But under the future changes, there are a few changes now, instead of districts getting 50 percent we now get 47.5 percent the world fund also gets 47.5 percent the remaining 2.5 percent from the district's designated fund and the world fund is what is used for administrative purposes unlike what currently obtains where 
we get a full 50 percent or five percent out of what goes to the world fund used for administrative purposes as uh, elizabeth told us earlier on it's a way to help our world fund to stretch further to take care of many more districts the experience mainly has stemmed from the fact that you know over the years we have encouraged with parents to access funds from the world fund to carry out projects and there has been a tremendous increase in the number of districts asking for funds and therefore the number of projects which is good that is good success story for the foundation but at the same time contributions due to various reasons economic downturn all over the world covid and everything has affected the amount that is coming to the foundation and essentially it means even though the needs are increasing, the requests are increasing, the money available in World Fund is getting less. So it's a, a bit of engineering by the foundation to make more funds available through the World Fund and they call it more clubs to carry out projects. So what comes to now, us now is 47.5% of our contribution of three years ago. So what do we now do or what are the opportunities available to us to apply our DDF judiciously still to the best advantage of Rotary International Rotary Foundation programs and also to our clubs and Rotarians to fulfill the mission of Rotary Foundation. So we can look at application of our funds in four categories. First is to support fully eradication. And the foundation encourages districts to take 20% minimum of the total DZF that we received, we receive and donate each year towards the polio eradication efforts. And we all agree that polio remains the number one priority of the foundation and also the number one external priority of Rotary International itself. So when we give 20% of our DDF to polio eradication, what will happen from next year, unlike currently where it is matched 100%, it is matched 50% from the world fund. And then that is secondly, really matched again by the Amelia Bates Foundation two to one. So essentially, if we have maybe three million dollars total 20 percent ddf collected worldwide and the foundation adds 1.5 million to it and the foundation will then double our 3.5 million so support polio education is the first application for our ddf and uh, all districts in the world do this sometimes we had some districts including mine that at one time did not give but in the end, we had to take off what we had denied the foundation. So every good district should give 20% of their DDF to support our number one priority. Second is to support district grants. And uh, in supporting district grants, we are allowed to take up to 50% of what remains of our DDF to support district grants. And what then remains, that is the remaining half of that 50%, we we'll then use to support global grants. It's also good for a district, especially if you have not completed using your funds, or even while you are still using your funds, to consider being a peace builder district. That is, we can also donate part of our DDF on a regular basis to support the peace centers. And uh, these centers have even become more important to us lately with the establishment of a seventh peak center in Africa, the center in Makere University in Uganda. So let's talk a bit more in depth about the various grants now. District grants, I'm sure we're all familiar with district grants since the rollout of the new grant model seven or so years ago all districts in the world have been using district grants. And uh, as we were told, that can now be up to 50% of the total of the DDF after we have given to polio eradication. 
district grants are meant to be simple projects, flexible, innovative, they support educational or humanitarian projects. They're not really bound by the seven areas of focus, but at the same time, we should ensure that the activities are consistent with the mission of the foundation. As I said, they are expected to be smaller projects and local decision making, unlike what happens with global grants, is actually made by us at district level. What that means is that at the beginning of the year, the district will announce to the district, the clubs, to apply for district grants for small funds to support simple projects. And when all the applications are vetted, the district will, of course, send a block request to the foundation. And when it's approved, the administration comes back to the district because the money is released to the district to disburse to the clubs. Clubs could also be encouraged to support the funds they receive from district grants to by adding additional funds from their club funds so that you can stretch what is available to do more. Now, I said that uh, we are allowed to take up to 50% of our DGA. Districts may also elect to take less than 50% in the desire to make more available for global grants. It all depends on the agreement between the districts and the clubs and of course the, the, the administration in the district. So while we are allowed to take up to 50%, we may take less and make more available for global grants. Now let's talk about global grants, which is the real mix, the one that expands the little funds we have to achieve so much more. Like I said, the activities under global grants have to be in the seven areas of focus, pardon the six that I wrote there. To be able to succeed with global grants, we need to have international partners. That means clubs or districts in other countries. Currently, what we give from our DDF is matched one to one. But now from July, when you give a dollar from DDF, the foundation will match with 0.8%, that is eight cents. And if you give a thousand dollars DDF, the foundation will match with $800. Now, there are a few other changes, you know, regarding this. In the past and up till now, we are required to be able to input at least $15,000 as the minimum that qualifies for TRF matching, but that is no longer so. We, we don't have to meet up to $15,000, but then we still have to ensure that the grant amount is not less than $30,000. I will speak about this more as we go on. And um, okay, this slide should have come up earlier. What your district grants may fund may fund humanitarian projects, may fund professional training teams, may fund GSE teams, can use it for educational purposes, can use it for scholarships, can also use it for needs assessment activities. That should have come up earlier, I'm sorry. Now, global grants are expected to be long-term projects. And, uh, it requires international participation. Usually, it involves larger grant awards. Sustainability is taken as very important. And, you know, the progress must be consistent with one of the seven, area, seven areas of focus. Um, the steps, of course, for being able to access global grants begin with needs assessment, write your proposals, use that to find partners and then go on to make your applications online. Now, as I told you, the minimum grant value is still $30,000. But the minimum limit of matchable funds of $15,000 is no longer necessary. That is, your grant should be at least $15,000. But unlike what happened in the past where the cash and DDF provided by you and your partners must be at least $15,000. It 
the road to attract 15,000 from the foundation is no longer in operation. That is because cash contributions no longer attract funding. And in spite of removing the fund uh, matching for cash, the foundation still wants us to do big projects. And in order to remove some of the obstacles we may encounter, that is why it has moved the cap of $15,000 minimum matchable funds. As I said earlier on, DDF matching is now reduced from coming year from 100% to 80% from first July. Actually, even for projects being applied, we're still applying for in the current year. Such projects must be submitted before the end of May if they are still to attract 100% matching and be approved before the end of the year, except for scholarships, which can still be submitted up to end of June. But from next year onwards, it's your DDF contribu uh, contribution to grants will match 80% from July 1. That is one of the many changes now taking place to the to the grants an example is this illustration here where maybe a club of Garaki gives a cash of two thousand dollars the foundation will not match with any amount now let's say a club of chicago gives a thousand ten thousand dollars it's also cash the foundation still will not match it with anything now, the district where Chicago Club is, let's say they give uh, $5,000, the, the, the foundation will match with $4,000. And when Rachel Garki also gives, uh, District 9125 gives DDF also of $5,000, the foundation will match with $4,000. When you look at all this, it adds up to that. But you will see that, in, unlike in the past, the $5,000 from uh, the 10,000 DDF are the only contributions that are matching and they're only attracting 8,000. But because we have made up with the cash, we still make 30,000, the project is good to go. I've been mentioning the areas of focus and they are not new to us. They are listed up there. The seventh being supporting the environment, which grants can be applied for from July this year. So what can Global Grants Fund? Humanitarian projects, educational projects. We can also fund vocational training teams. We can also fund a combination of a humanitarian or an educational project that combines BTT with it. For instance, some years ago, we had a cleft lip and palate surgery project in Illinois, and it was a humanitarian health project. But then it also had a VTT accompanying it because the doctors in the team also had the mission of imparting their knowledge and expertise to local doctors so that they could continue to carry out their activities even after they have left. And that is a subject of sustainability. Postgraduate scholarships are also funded through global grants, and, uh, as long as they fit into one of the areas of focus. Scholarships can be awarded for one to four years of postgraduate studies. And usually to proceed, the candidate must have gotten admission in the chosen university, and then you can make applications. These studies, master's program in seven centers, and also the three month short course in Bangkok. So, fellow repairs, the foundation under the current changes encourages us to use our DDF fully. There are many districts where DDF is so closely guarded that at the end of the year, almost little of the money is touched. But as we were told earlier on, the Fiserald Foundation is that these funds should not just be locked up somewhere, but they should be actually employed on a regular basis to make a difference around the world by sponsoring projects. 
So even though when we have DDS left in a particular year, we roll it over and it adds to the DDS in the coming year. What the foundation really wants is that we exhaust our DDS each year. But when we don't, we are allowed to roll it over to the next year. But after five years, the rollover will no longer be permitted for money that has been rolled over for five years. So from 2026, such funds that are unused will actually revert to the road foundation and be allowed to, on the district's discretion, will be applied to support a number of things like polio education, area of focus endowment fund, peace centers, disaster relief, disaster response fund, or to the world fund. We still have a chance of, you know, deciding where our unused funds will go. But the important thing is that the unused funds are no longer available to make direct change in our communities. So my fellow Rotarians, um, a number of changes, as we were told in the earlier presentation, and as we also learned in, the, in this current presentation, has been proposed and will start to take effect from July 1 this year. But we notice that even though there are a number of changes, somehow or the other, it still allows us to do what we want to do, only that we are making changes to save funds and to make more money available to support more global grants. Because you can imagine how disappointed clubs and communities are when they have done all the needs assessment, they have done, put up the application and they are told the funds have been exhausted. So the more things change, we see that the more they remain the same. Sometimes change can be painful. And the changes that have been proposed are not permanent. We are assured that as soon as the foundation becomes more solvent, we donate more money to the foundation's coffers through the various uh, channels. Certainly, the foundation will be happy to allow us to go back to some of what we are used to in the past as long as we fulfill the mission of the foundation, which is to make the world a better place. And the changes that have been made are necessary for adaptation, and they are good for us. So let us embrace them, walk around them, and continue to serve our communities. Thank you, fellow friends. That's the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, We'll mute our uh, telephones, please. We are having some um, participants interrupting the session. Please mute your telephones, your speakerphone, sorry. I want to sincerely thank um, our original Rotary coordinator for this very detailed and comprehensive presentation on the opportunities that are available to Rotarians in the evolving DDF changes. PDG Dende Sugar, we thank you so very much for your time and for sharing your Sunday afternoon with us. You will do us the honor of just being on standby to respond to potential questions that may be raised in respect of this presentation. But we will not take the questions before we take the next presentation by yet another past district governor um, who is the district Rotary Foundation coordinator district 9110, no other than our revered PD Shodipo, who is on standby to Hi. share with us the details on how to package global growth. Invite our uh, district chairs, our uh, president, our president, our president elect, our assistant. Please um, be on uh, with a lot of rap to listen to this very pa well packaged presentation on global grant packaging to prepare us from, I mean, for 
accessing the global grant in the incoming Rutria. PDG, Kola Shodipo, please take it away. Please unmute yourself, PDG Kola. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, the district tenor, Rutria Miyake. Uh, the district governor elect and other district leaders, my dear fellow Rotarians listening from District 9125, and of course, all over the other district joining us this evening. Yeah, I would like to share my screen. Okay. That's that. Okay, that's fine. Um, some of the presentations I'm going to make. Uh, sorry, PDG. Um, sorry, yes, PDG. It looks like you have another um, line open that is vibrating. So we have echoes coming from your presentation. If there's anyone close to you who is also logged in, he may either have to mute the sound, the audio completely, or even um, leave the presentation so we can yeah. hear you. Without the I, think, I think it's off now. Thank you so much, PDG. Thank you so much. Please fire on, sir. Yes. If you look at the presentation of um, Anja, and of, okay, this thing is still making noise. I'm so sorry. Yes, yeah, presentation of Anja and of course our regional Rotary Foundation coordinator, PDG Sugar, he mentioned some of the points that I would like to highlight. Uh, but that won't be as it may. I think um, I will just um, fire on and um, talk to us about the uh, Rotary Foundation applying for global grants. Can you assess the screen now? Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Visible. Good. good. So applying for global grant. Uh, first of all, all grant application uh, is done on, at the grant center. And it is the platform that is utilized for us to apply for all grants, maybe district grant or global grant. It is also the platform that we use to track the progress and report and also search for other grants. There are basically two types of grants before the programs of scale grants, which had been adequately handled by ANJA. Uh, the, the, the district grant is for smaller scale short-term projects and address immediate needs of your community. And at the district level, we can handle that, just as PDG Sugar has mentioned. Whereas the global grants that I'm going to talk about uh, supports larger international projects with long-term sustainable outcomes in one or more areas of focus of Rotary Foundation. If you look at the slide, you'll see what's there as the life cycle of a Rotary grant. The process starts by you conceptualizing the, the grant that you want to engage in the project, uh, having a needs assessment conducted, and then Rotary members work together and plan that project, or if it is a scholarship and build their grant application online, then it will be in draft form. Once you are through with the draft application, and every other thing has been put in place, you go to authorization stage where the club president, if it's a project or a global grant that is initiated by the uh, club, the club president will authorize. Then the district governor will also order, authorize. And if you are going to use part of the district designated fund, then the district Rotary Foundation chair will also authorize. Once you do all the authorization, immediately, automatically, or if all the authorization are done both locally and internationally, it is submitted to the Rotary Foundation. And once it is submitted, our district, uh, sorry, our Rotary Foundation grant officers will review it 
And if satisfactory, it gets approved depending on the amount. At a particular amount, it gets to the uh, Board of Trustees of Rotary Foundation for approval. But if it's still within the range of uh, 30,000 to 200,000 US dollars, it's approved by the grant officers. And once it is approved, you will be advised, and then you can now go on to execute the project. Needs assessment. For all grants, and most especially for global grant, a major requirement is that you must have conducted a needs assessment to be sure that the project that you are applying to do as a global grant is not what you want to give them, but what the community that you want to uh, assist or to execute project wants, what the community needs and not what you as Rotarian or as a Rotary Club or as a district want to give. So you must conduct a needs assessment and submit that report of needs assessment before the application or along with your application to the grant center. And uh, for us to know what it entails to do a community needs assessment, a typical form or guideline is on Rotary.org, uh, the grant center at Rotary.org. For all global grant application, unlike the district grant, for all global grants application, you require an international partner. An international partner could be a Rotary club or an international Rotary district or combination of both. Well, you may say that we have four districts in Nigeria, but you cannot do, uh, for, for, for us, it's, uh, in Nigeria, you rather get a, an international partner as close as Republic of Benin than to pick an international partner from the district, uh, from within Nigeria. So you need really an international partner outside the shores of your district. And how do you get international partners? They are listed here, some of the suggested ways and means with which you can get international project uh, partner for your global grant project. For West African Project Fair, we had one last year, although it was a virtual project fair, I'm sure a number of clubs or districts may have gotten their projects supported, but that's a, uh, an avenue to get international partner. And uh, secondly, when we go for our Rotary Institutes and Rotary International Conventions, when we are in the House of Friendship, we not only enjoy the uh, fellowship there, but it's an opportunity for us to discuss internal projects, global grant projects that can uh, attract colleagues and Rotarians and districts and clubs to partner with us. Then we can also get international partners when we have Rotary Friendship Exchange, fellow Rotarians coming from all over the districts, all over the world, or other as their spouses or even Rotarians, they can assist us. Rotary Youth Exchange students can assist us with their home clubs or home districts. We can also get international partners when we go to the rotary.org uh, website and look uh, at the Rotary Ideas and Rotary Showcase, where projects that have been successfully executed have been posted, and we can share ideas from them. Then, of course, not forgetting our past district governors and other district leaders that have friends in well over 500 districts that they have friends and classmates. They can also assist us to get international partners, Rotary alumni, and of course, Rotarian Action Group members. We have the WASH, we have the RFHA, and so many other ones that can assist us and can get international partners for them. For some of us, or some of our Rotarians in our districts that are members of the cadre of technical advisors, they can also assist us with their friends our, our colleagues in other districts for us to get uh, international partners. Indeed, all Rotarians over, all over the world can assist us in getting international partners for our various projects. If you want to use the district designated fund, I always advise that we should pre-inform whoever is the district governor and the district Rotary Foundation chairman and the district uh, grants subcommittee chairman or chairperson 
The reason being that uh, in our own environment here, our DDA, BC Designated Fund, is not too much, uh, too many, or so much for us to just get to them and say, oh, I want $5,000 here. I want $10,000 to support the project. So pre-inform them so that at least they can plan and uh, allocate to you based on the needs and of course the availability of funds. It is important for us to do that before we go to the process. How do we apply for a global grant? To apply for a global grant, you will sign into my Rotary at rotary.org. And if you don't have a my Rotary account, you will need to open one and follow the guide on how to create one for yourself. On my Rotary, you go to the grant center, then click on apply for grants and a page will pop up and it will show you how to use. And of course, when that page pop up, there is a, to your left, to your right, you can also click on how to use the grant center as a guide as to how to navigate that, that uh, the form and all the information therein. In the alternative, you can download the form, the global grant application template form, fill it physically on your own, get all the necessary information that you need, and then come back online to make the input. It makes it easier for you if you are not so uh, online savvy in terms of uh, maneuvering the uh, uh, online application. A downloadable copy of the global grant application form is also available at Grant Center and other downloads under uh, learning and development. The application process itself. When you get that form on application uh, global grant application template or the form, if you, the, the, the form has a number of questions that you need to answer to. Some of the questions include, what is the objective of the project? What is it all about? You want to cite a, a sink a, a borehole project in a community. It will ask you, have you conducted a needs assessment? How many people within that community will benefit from the project? Uh, what are the activities that are going to be involved for you to get to the conclusion of the project? Where is the project going to be located? What was the plan for the project and the schedule, how you want to go about the project, uh, the project? What area, what type of project is it? Is it a humanitarian educational project? And what area of focus will it cover? Do you have cooperating organization apart from Rotary? That is whether you have some partners, other technical partners or people with special uh, skills and uh, expertise that they will help you and assist in your project. Then if there is going to be a volunteer travel, uh, just like PDG Shogar mentioned in his presentation, you could, uh, the global grant could be in such that uh, you have a, uh, what we call the um, uh, vocational training team coming to assist in a particular project, like uh, all these surgical missions uh, that we had some time ago, or the cleft lip project that uh, he mentioned. Of course, the question, the form will also ask you, is there going to be any Rotarian involvement in that project? Rotary Foundation encourages us and expects us as Rotarians not only to put the money there, but to have some handsome activity on the project. Then, of course, the budget, both in Naira and in US dollars. The budget, they want to see your project, budget, how much have you allocated to each aspect of the project. And of course, the financing. The financing is where you will tell us or you tell the Rotary Foundation what amount your club or your district will give. Are you going to use DDF? Are you, what is the international partner, Rotary Club and district? It's going to give the amount it's going to give and how much you will require the Rotary Foundation to match you with. Then of course, there will also be question on sustainability. You know, for Rotary, uh, Rotary Foundation Global Grants, 
sustainability of the project is very important. Is there a project question on project you want to do one year and then two, three years later, the thing is gone? The Rotary Foundation wants to be to see that your project is sustainable on a long term basis and for years to come. Then monitoring and evaluation questions will also be asked. Uh, how do you want to monitor the project? How do you want to evaluate that the what has been the impact on that project on your pro, on, on, on the community that you cite the project? So those are the that is the application process. Then, of course, once you get through all those ones, as I said earlier on in the uh, life cycle of a global grant, uh, the club and district officers have different levels of access to your grant application. In fact, some of them, when you are applying, uh, it gives uh, sends a prompt to the district Rotary Foundation chair and your district governor that a, pro a global grant is being applied and you may need authorization, he or she may need authorization for that. So people that, uh, those officers that will authorize the application includes the primary contact, I mean the Rotarian in your club or district that is uh, wrote the project, the club president, if it's a club sponsor project, you want to be sure your club's there, uh, the club president is aware, then the district Rotary Foundation chair and the district governor. It is important for, Rotary for all global grants that your club must have pre-qualified at the beginning of each Rotary year, even before you can apply. And that's why your district governor elect, if he has not done that, would be calling all clubs to come for grant management seminar, where all clubs must pre-qualify. And the statutory that the Rotary club president and the club president elect will sign a memorandum of understanding which will be on file. Of course, the district, your district, and all other districts all over the Rotary world will also qualify each Rotary year to ensure that you abide by the rules and the guidelines and uh, uh, necessary requirements of the Rotary Foundation. Uh, what next? After you have completed your application and has, it has been submitted, it will be review, reviewed by the regional Rotary Foundation grant officer. For our district and for all the districts in Nigeria, uh, the grant, our grant officer is uh, in Yenemo. Uh, and of course, if there are issues, it will review, get back to you, ask questions as many times as possible until he's satisfied that you have done the, uh, the needful. And if necessary, he will even ask the cadre of technical advisors that, that specialize in that particular area of focus you want to implement projects on to also make inputs and review if necessary. And if additional information is needed, uh, it will ask and you must uh, answer to scale through to the approval process. There are some reasons why global grants may be ineligible. For, for instance, uh, it may be ineligible if it does not fit at least one of the seven areas of focus as listed. Or the grant officer uh, needs more application uh, uh, information. Or the project doesn't fit, uh, or if the project has a very high risk of failure, or he doesn't feel it is going to be sustainable. Or the project benefits other organizations program rather than Rotary Foundation. Or if your community need assessment was not conducted or was not properly conducted and reported. These are some of the reasons where your project for global grant application may be denied. Budget, a typical example of a, uh, of a of funding and budget template for application is on the screen. Uh, assuming you want to uh, renovate, sorry, you want to sink a borehole with 13 points in a, uh, in a school. And you also want to uh, equip that school with a sick bay. And you want to give them a computer ready, internet ready facility or a computer laboratory. Uh, you have it there. You notice that 
on that screen, on the screen you are looking at, if you are sinking a borehole, that's an area of focus called um, water sanitation and hygiene. If you are equipping a school sick bay, that's an area of focus called disease prevention and treatment. And if you are providing uh, internet enabled computers, that's basic education and literacy. So in a particular global grant, you can have just one area of focus or two or three more uh, areas of focus in there. So for this particular project, uh, let's assume the total amount is $12.54 million uh, Naira, 12.54 million Naira. Then at our current exchange rate, if you convert it to dollars, it will be 33,000 US dollars, which means it's a project that is more than $30,000. Remember PDG Sugar mentioned to us that for global grants, it can, the total budget, total budget in totality should not be less than 30,000 US dollars. So for this project, it will scale through if you meet other criteria and requirements. So that's 33,000 US dollars. So let's go and look at it the other way. How do we now fund it? If a club A, maybe a club, Rosy Club of uh, Abuja Jabi in uh, DC 9125 is putting down 2,000 US dollars for that project, Rotary Foundation will not match cash because it is, it is now regarded as cash contribution from the club. There won't be any matching there. But if another, also another club, an international partner this time around, maybe Rotary Club of uh, Queensland in uh, Australia is giving you 4,000 US dollars supporting that program or uh, global grant then the Rotary Foundation will also not match to be zero because it's also regarded as a club contribution or a cash contribution. Then if our your district 9125 as the host district now releases a DDF, District Destiny Fund of 5,000 US dollars. As of today, if you put it in before May 31st, then it will be $5,000. But because we're almost into entering the next rotary year, it will now be matched 80%. So it will be $4,000. US Then an international district, maybe district 7670 in North Carolina, USA, if that district gives you a DDF of $10,000, US it will also be matched 80%. And that gives you $8,000. If you do all those addition from Club A, Club B, uh, District 9125, and International District, you get 33,000 US dollars. So you now see that your 33,000 US dollars that you have here in this slide, in this screen, on the screen, on this slide, which is 12.540 million Naira, has been uh, uh, funded through two Rotary clubs, one in Nigeria, one abroad, and two Rotary districts, one in Nigeria and one in USA. Please note the following. Clubs can combine and work together on a global grant project and funding. What I'm saying is that two clubs can work together on a global grant. And of course, it is allowed. You can also have more than one club or one international district or clubs. You can have group of clubs to support your funding. The reason being that at times it may not be easy for you to get 10,000 US dollars from a district, but you can get $3,000 3, or 3,000, 4,000, 3,000 from three districts uh, to, easier for you to fund your project. Of course, the seven areas of focus, as a reminder, are listed on the screen. I'm sure we all still remember. Uh, we have peace building and conflict prevention, disease prevention and treatment, maternal and child health, water sanitation and hygiene, basic education and literacy, community economic development, and of course, the last and the newest support for the environment. For you to get a global grant application approved, at least one of these areas of focus must 
be covered, must be covered. Examples of projects that you can do are listed there. For peace building and conflict prevention, uh, you can have scholarship of a student for a master's degree in peace studies. For disease prevention and treatment, the yearly uh, family health days program, which I'm sure your district 9125 is also involved in, is an example of uh, uh, disease prevention and treatment. Maternal and child health area of focus is uh, by provision of neonatal incubators and uh, resuscitators to hospitals is an example of a global government global grant project you can do. For water sanitation and hygiene, we have so many of them, uh, like uh, building toilet facilities or sinking boreholes all over. For basic education and literacy, you can have ICT and e-learning equipment and teacher training for schools. And of course, for community economic development, a number of these are microcredit scheme uh, programs for petty traders or group of uh, cooperative operators and the rest. Uh, uh, these are some of the examples of the projects that you can go for when you are looking for global grant projects to be funded with matching from the Rotary Foundation World Fund. Distinguished Rotarians and my dear district leaders, this is all I want to talk to you about for now on how to package and apply for a global grant and I welcome your questions as necessary. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you so very much. Um, you. I'll pass District Governor Kola Shodipo for that very comprehensive presentation on how best to package our global grant applications. It is now time for question and answer. And you would agree with me that time is far spent. So I will invite a few questions and those questions would sure have to be brisk and straight to the point. If you want to make a comment, make it very brief. Let us be considerate to the schedules of our other colleagues in the house so that we will um, quickly round up and let people enjoy what is left of the weekend. So. Um, distinguished Rotarians, please ask your questions by raising your hands on the platform, not on the video, because I won't see you on the video. Just raise your hands on the platform and I will take your questions. Please let us ask questions. Our respected resource persons are still here with us so we can get the best of answers to our global grant, district grant application challenges. This is the time to do so, so that by the time we're done with the seminar, we're armed and prepared to um, use our clubs to begin to access um, grants to enable us impact on our immediate communities and globally tied. So please ask your questions by show of hands on the platform. And I'll invite you to share the moment with our resource persons who are here on standby and listening. Well, so far I have seen no hands raised. I am tempted to conclude that um, our participants have resonated very um, effectively with the presentations that have been made and have taken home the message or messages that are contained therein. Um, you would agree with me that this is the right time to begin to talk about the opportunities to access the world um, grants from the World Fund and also grants from the district for, um, district grant. And the reason I'm saying this is because the incoming Rotary year is just around the corner. Our district governors elect, our presidents elect, must by now be armed with their applications or have already sent them in, preparing to begin to 
draw down from the foundation. If you haven't done so and you're a president elect, you're in the house, you must begin to wrap it up because time is almost running against you to ensure that your application is already packaged to benefit from the um, global grants, the World Fund that is, and of course, the DDF. Distinguished Rotarians, my district leaders in the house, you would agree with me that we had a sumptuous diet this afternoon with the very comprehensive and enlightening deliveries we got on the program of scale grants from our own there and the Stoke from the foundation office. And indeed our own Elizabeth Nganga, when she unpacked the evolving developments in the World Fund, which is supposed to prepare us to strategize without mistakes on how best it is to submit our applications drawing from the World Fund. We also had this very rare privilege of having our RRFC in the house, um, past district governor, um, um, the Indian Sugar, who shared with us those opportunities that exist even within the context of the changes. And of course, the icing of the cake came from our PDG, Kola Shodipo, who took us down the lane on how best to package our global grant applications. And this was a day well spent, you'll agree with me. And I want to sincerely thank the participants because what we had was a, a, um, a, a loaded day with um, the packages intact, having some of the best resource persons in the house. And of course, having learned so much, I want to sincerely thank um, the resource persons and the Stoke, Elizabeth Nganga, the Indi Shoga, and PDG Kola Shodibo for your time. God will bless you, and I hope you'll always be on standby to take us through um, issues that concern the foundation. May I also sincerely thank past district governor um, Joshua Hassan, past district governor Saliu Ahmed, past district governor um, Tulu Omasola. I'm so sorry I was to have recognized you much earlier, but thank you for joining um, the seminar and we appreciate your continued support and encouragement. May I also thank um, past district governor Elvis Chuku for being on hand. Um, one of the first to be on the platform um, to take us through and for also accepting to stand in for the district governor. Thank you so much, uh, PDG Elvis, we appreciate you. And I also want to thank you for the very incisive question you asked. Uh, hopefully we will get a feedback from Anja with the question on how it is to avoid the pitfalls that led to some of those applications on the um, 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 program of um, skip, sorry. Um, I think the question was um, on the program of scale. Yes, that was a question. And I think her response will help us to coordinate better, better applications, avoiding those potential fault lines. I want to thank you so sincerely, PDG Elvis Chuku for being on hand. DGE Ayo Oyedokun, you were with me at the beginning of this to the end. I want to thank you for the mentorship. I want to thank you for the technical support. I want to thank you for helping me assemble the resource persons. And I want to thank you for giving us a direction on how to approach the incoming Rotary Year. Um, the District Rotaract representative, Rotaractor Cleo Washima, are in there, was on the platform. I hope you took benefit. And I hope you also took away the information that now Rotaractors can begin to participate as partners in packaging global grants and executing global grants while you prepare for 2022 to enable Rotaractors begin to apply directly for global grants. Our Assistant Rotary Public Image Coordinator, Gloria Thomas was on the platform. Thank you for coming. 
I want to acknowledge um, our zonal coordinators on two Elvis Obaseki. Thank you for coming. Um, POP Constance Okeke, thank you for bringing in our presidents. Funsho Alimi from Diaspora, um, past president Vijay Kawaramani, thank you for coming. Our friends from Ghana, our friends from Kotonou and the diaspora, I want to thank you very sincerely for supporting this um, seminar to a uh, logical success. May I therefore, uh, on this note, invite um, um, District Governor elect Ayo Oedokun to, on behalf of the District Governor, give us a closing remark. DGE Ayo Oedokun, please take it away. All right, thank you very much, District Trainer to the Mayaki. In addition to the recognitions, I want to say a very big thank you to past District Governor MB Unoka for also being part of the program for today. Your presence has added value and added color and glamour to our program of today. Thank you so much for being here. And um, to all the presidents. I didn't notice you. So sorry about that. Oh, yeah, I can see him now. Thank you for the bailout, DGE. I, oh, I didn't notice um, his Thank you so very much. All right. <laughs> Don't worry. you always be billed out. So I want to say um, it has been a rewarding two hours. I, we have just overshot by about 17 minutes. And um, without taking much of your time, you know, um, it's been a, a revelation and um, an insightful um, seminar for us to be able to understand why we need to keep on packaging, you know, global grants. And if you if you quite agree with me, you know, there is no reason why no districts in Africa should not be part of this program of skills um, grants, you know, so that we can be able to have better and impactful um, project that we are doing. The one that Zambia has got is more about eliminating malaria. And we do have malaria in Nigeria and also all other parts of Africa. So such projects are going to be beneficial to us. And um, I was happy when PDG Elvis Chuku took up that um, aspect of it for us to understand what happened, why we did not get these grants and what we can do better. And I can assure you that with all of us that are around this table today, we should be able to put ourselves in the map and say, yes, we are going to be part of the program of skills um, grant that is coming in the year 2021-2022. If it's one, it must come to Africa. And if it must come to Africa, it must come to Nigeria. And if it must come to Nigeria, it must come to District 9125. Um, I, I am not I'm an apologet I'm not apologetic of being so mindful of us as a district. Sorry for other districts that might be here. But we want to be able to do so much for ourselves and put ourselves as Nigerians in the map of the world. So on behalf of the district governor, um, Rotarian Jumoke Bamikwe, we say a very big thank you to each and every one of us. Please, let us continue to do good all around the world. Let us remain people of actions. Let us assess the grants that we can assess, either be it global, be it district, or be the program of skills. And above all, we should not forget that the World Fund is depleting, and that means that we need to contribute more to the Rotary Foundation. Let us be givers, because givers never lack. Give to the Rotary Foundation, and we will be able to access to do great and mighty projects all around our various community. Thank you very much once again, and be rest assured that we will indeed send the recordings to you all, and also the presentations by each of the presenters that were here today. And I want to say finally a big thank you to the Rotaract uh, members that were here, ably led by the DRR Cleopatra. I know it would be out of place if I don't say a big thank you to you as well, and Immaculates that joined us and other Rotaractors. And on behalf of the District Governor nominee, he also wanted to be here, but he had an important assignment that he had to quickly do in the office, and he sends his profound apologies for not being here. So DGN God the owner day will have been with us here today and it shows that three the triker are working. 
the district governor, the district governor elect, and the district governor are all working together in order to make sure that Rotary is indeed impactful in our community. Thank you very much and appreciate you all. Thank you very much, District Governor elect, for that final invocation. I, on a final note, want to sincerely thank all the participants for sharing your afternoon with us, and I hope it was worth your while. So good evening, and have a lovely um, rest of the weekend and a lovely week ahead. Thank you so very much, and goodbye.